So when I was asked to give this talk, a million doubts started going through my mind. Um, I'm probably going to be bad at this. Who wants to listen to me? Questioning, am I interesting enough to give a talk? And then I realized that all these doubts that were going through my mind were the exact doubts that I try to get out of my own students' heads every time they walk into the door of my biology or my chemistry classroom. So after going to a colleague for advice, <laughs> so psyched out and insecure about having to be vulnerable and talk about myself, she gave me a seemingly simple piece of advice. <laughs> and she said, well, what is one thing you want your students to know? <laughs> one thing? <laughs> Uh, seemed like I was being asked for my purpose or my role in the biosphere or that existential question, what are we doing here? <laughs> but the first thing that honestly came to my mind was I pictured myself sitting in my high school chemistry classroom all the way in the back, <laughs> hiding behind a reference table, trying to be invisible, <laughs> wondering how I even chose to take chemistry because I was never really good at science. <laughs> I snuck by, I cared about my grades, but you know, 70s and 80s on the state tests in earth science and biology, chemistry was just next. So I hoped to skate by the whole year just being unnoticed. And I hoped that no one called on me and nobody understood that I was lost. And looking back, I think everyone was probably lost, uh, but they just seemed to hide it better or they were more confident than I was. I successfully stayed invisible the whole year and got about a 70 on the state exam and somehow decided to sign up for physics the following year. But to be honest, it was just so that I could miss that one day of school to go on to an amusement park. <laughs> so I f went through the whole year of physics just to go to an amusement park. I don't know why. <laughs> but I got a 65 on that state exam. Yes. <laughs> and I retired from science completely, went out the bang. <laughs> and my senior year, I didn't sign up for a, one science class, none, not a single class. I felt like my time was better spent in the band room or in chorus. And the real reason I came to school every day was sports and drama club, 100%. So after graduation, uh, the soccer coach at SUNY Potsdam recruited me to play, and I thought that was cool. I can keep playing soccer, and they have an elementary education program. And my mom was a teacher, and a lot of my family members were teachers, so I thought, well, maybe I could do that too. <laughs> and my freshman year, lo and behold, they said, well, you're gonna have to take Biology 101 with Dr. Conley. And everyone was like, oh no, <laughs> okay. Well, it had been over a year since I had taken science at all, three years since I had taken biology, so you do the math, I failed the first two, three quizzes, <laughs> and I immediately panicked and got a tutor. Yes, the biology teacher got a tutor. <laughs> and I warned her ahead of time, I said, I'm really bad at science, you have your work cut out for you. But as time went on, I realized I didn't really need the tutor, I just needed to pay attention in class. And my teacher, Dr. Conley, was obsessed with these aquatic organisms called copepods. And I thought, how could anybody be so passionate about something so boring, so boring? <laughs> but I just started paying attention, it engaged me, and before you knew it, I was doodling little copepods on my notes, and I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> I started staying after to ask questions, and then it came time in the year to choose a concentration for my elementary ed degree. And I thought, well, Dr. Conley's kind of cool. I'll choose biology, might never use it again, whatever. <laughs> I ended up taking every single class that Dr. Conley offered because he suggested I do. And when I had taken all of those classes and all the other biology classes, I took geology and physics and yes, even chemistry. <laughs> and by my third year, after a conversation with Dr. Conley, I abandoned education completely and I pursued a degree in biology. <laughs> no idea what I was gonna do with it, <laughs> but I took my degree back home, pretty excited to be done 
with school forever. That wasn't true. <laughs> and started coaching soccer here at my alma mater. And I decided to go back to school right across the street to get my master's in education. And I was going to be a biology teacher because I had a bio degree now. I'm smart now. <laughs> so I walked into class and we, you know, a couple weeks in, start looking at the standards, what I'm responsible for teaching. And high school me, right back in it. Insecure. Oh my gosh, I was always so bad at this. Why did I make this decision? So about four years later, I finally got my first teaching job. And lo and behold, right here <laughs> at my alma mater, and the irony was not lost on me that I would be teaching in the same room where I used to hide behind my reference table. Same room. <laughs> my biggest fear was that all my students were going to be smarter than I am. Biggest fear. Oh, they're definitely going to know more biology than I do. And what they don't tell you when you get a bio degree is that they're gonna make you teach chemistry too. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so now the fears are circling even more. Oh my God, those kids are even smarter. They're gonna be smarter than me. I was a mess for probably three or four years of teaching. <laughs> After my fifth year, I was lucky enough to join the master teacher program in New York State. And again, insecurities, these are the best of the best teachers in science and math. I don't belong here. I'm not good enough to be a master teacher. No way. But I think as you get older, you start to care less and less about what people think of you. And I was just along for the ride at that point. I got to keep learning science, which was fine with me. It's what I always wanted since college. And I started to embrace that people should be smarter than I am. Otherwise, I never would have had the opportunity to learn any more science, and I definitely would not be here today. And it was about that time when we started exploring the new science learning standards, which I thought were awesome because you got to level the playing field for students. The investigating, the exploring, the curiosity comes first, the explanation comes second. So everyone's in the same boat, solving a problem, and no one's expected to know the answer right away. I wish someone had told me that in high school. My philosophy started to change from fear to embracing that I hope my students are smarter than I am. What kind of world would it be if all my students' learning ended in my classroom in 10th grade? That would be terrible. <laughs> so, when I came back to what am I going to talk about, I realized I wasn't really talking to you. I was talking to my high school self and all the things I wish someone had told me. <laughs> I wish someone had said, you should take science as a senior. You don't have to be a scientist, but you should try it. Don't leave that problem blank. Try it. Ask questions when you're confused because you're not the only one. <laughs> so, I started to think of science as not a subject anymore, as more of a practice. And you're supposed to be bad at things you practice. If you're good, you don't have to practice anymore. So, I'm here to tell you that this world has lots of problems that need to be solved. You can't be bad at solving problems if you just try. You just have to try. You can't be bad at thinking, and you can't be bad at being curious. It's not possible. If there's anything that you get out of today, I hope that it is. You can't be bad at science. It's not possible. Thank you.